Everybody seems to love the style of this panel, but the installation is overly complex and the instructions are unclear, so I figured I'd put together this video after reading carefully and uh, see if I can't help a few people online out. So, first of all, I've laid everything out here and I've done some extra labeling. So at the very top here, you have your top panel. I've marked it one. You can tell because it's the uh, one with the larger holes in it and those holes go down. So this is the very top of the panel and then we're going to go down this direction. The second panel is going to have no uh, holes whatsoever in it. The third panel is very easy because it's got the hole for the TV. And then the fourth panel is uh, the only one left in this case and it's actually labeled number 11, which you can see right there. And I know that this is the bottom panel because we see these little holes all the way across. And we'll talk about uh, those in just a little bit. Uh, next thing you want to do is you want to start putting together the outside frame. Uh, the sevens are very clearly labeled on the ends, but I've labeled them here on the top as well. You have two ends. You have the white end or the colored end, and then you have the non-finished end. Uh, the finished end is going to go on the outside. <clears throat> and then same thing here, finished end, unfinished end. And you can see that these holes start to line up with right where these panels decide to go. Um, don't be afraid, there's no holes here. We're actually going to be screwing and gluing directly into that, which is uh, pretty unusual for some of this assembly furniture. On the bottom here, we can look at parts 9 and 10. Um, 10, you can actually see that it's got the uh, sort of insert here so that when you put the screws in, it's going to be flush. So you know that this goes this direction. And you can actually see that some of the screws line up with the holes here. So we can clearly see that that's going to line up there. And then 9 is what's actually going to be mounted to the wall. So if I flip 9 over, you can actually see where the screws are going to be mounted this direction into the wall so that at the end of the setup process, uh, this is going to lock into 9 and 10 together. And that's that weight and that pressure is what's going to hold it together. Same thing on this side, 9 and 10. And then on the very top, same general process, but instead of two uh, small pieces, you have one very large piece. So you have six on the top, again with the uh, ridges here so that when the screws screw in, it's flat. And then four, which will be mounted to the wall, which you can see the holes here. And then eventually the entire piece, six, seven, one, two, three, eleven, eight, and ten will mount up onto the wall, sitting on top of nine, nine here, and four. All right, I figured it was time for another video. Uh, in my previous video, I just wanted to point out one thing that I had uh, this panel upside down. I had correctly had the white facing out, but the screw pieces, um, you could tell that it was incorrect. Of course, I didn't notice till after I glued it, hence the uh, glue marks here. Uh, but you can see that this is the incorrect side to insert the screw, and this is the correct side because of the beveled edge here. So um, note that I made that mistake in my first video and uh, was able to correct it without any damage done, but uh, be careful not to make the same mistakes. All right, this is step two of the Manhattan TV panel. I have uh, appropriately uh, glued and screwed everything that I needed to on the panel itself. And now it is time for mounting on the wall. And so you'll see I drew four lines on the wall. Uh, the first line here is gonna represent where I wanted the bottom of my panel to be. And that's because I have some Ikea cabinets that I'm gonna be putting down here. They're gonna be 25 inches high. So I decided I want the bottom of the white panel to be 23 to create enough lip so that any cables that decide to need to go up they can do so without obstructing uh, or without being visible. This next line is going to represent the lip on my part number nine. So as a reminder, this is part number nine. And what's going to happen is I'm going to mount this to my wall using either the included sheetrock uh, screws or if I can, I'd prefer to get, actually get into a stud here. And uh, that top of that lip is going to match the top of my line here.
And then at the very top, I'm gonna take my number four piece, which is the really long piece, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing where the top of that lip is gonna line up. Now, how did I get the measurements here? Uh, pretty simple and straightforward, but just in case you need me to walk you through it, the bottom of my panel is here. So the first thing I wanted to do is measure from here to here, which on mine was four inches, almost exactly. And then the second measurement I measured was from here up to the bottom of the next lip up there. And that was, I believe, 46.5. So why that's important is, this is where I want the bottom of my white panel. Four inches up is where the top of this lip on my part number nine is gonna sit. Let me just grab it. <clears throat> and then the piece is gonna be locked in. And then the exact same thing, 40 set, or 46 and a half inches up is gonna happen on the top panel there. So I'm gonna mount the three pieces, the two number nines, the number four, and then I'm gonna lift the panel into place. All right, so I've already hung up two of the panels here, and I'm just gonna do the third one and figure that I would take a quick video of this, just in case you're not familiar with how to use uh, sheetrock screws. Uh, so the first thing we did is make sure the lip is pointing up and on the outside here. And then the other thing I did is I measured from the center of my panel to where I want this center screw, and I put the little mark there. So Sophia, if you can line that up so that the mark is pretty much lined up with that hole. And then we obviously want to make sure that this is nice and level. That looks pretty good there. It's a little high on that side, Sophia, bring it down. Okay. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. All right, hold that nice and tight up there for me. Now I'm just going to take a really small drill bit that's going to allow me to easily get into the center of this hole. And then I'm just going to drill a small, small hole. Keep holding tight. I don't want to lose that. All right, this is one more. Hold it tight. Okay, so we have our three holes drilled. Now go ahead and take that down. Now I'm switching over to the larger bit. And in this case, the bit that I need ends up being, I think, a 3 eighths. Let me just confirm. Um, yeah, 3 eighths bit. <clears throat> So now I know exactly where the center of those holes need to go. Now I'm going to go ahead and drill the full size hole that we need in order to put in the sheetrock screws. So I'm just going to do a hole here, one hole here, and one hole here. And we get a little, go ahead and take that out. All right, perfect. Now I'll go ahead and grab uh, three of the gray inserts. They should fit snugly, but they shouldn't be so snug that you can't get them in easily with a hammer. And we just hammer those in so they're flush. All right, go ahead and hammer that one in. If by chance you hit a stud, uh, we didn't in any of these, but I did hit one over here, uh, then you obviously don't need to use the insert and you can screw right into the stud. All right, now let's go ahead and put the panel up. Now I'm just switching my drill bit over to the Phillips head. Okay. And now go ahead and put a screw in there to get these started i always like to put them in just enough that it sticks out on the other side which you can see here and then you can place it in the hole that way you know that you're directly in there and then sophia go ahead and finish that off now nice and slow and steady on this because the way that those inserts work is Got to put a little bit more pressure on there. Go ahead. Okay. They actually expand once they're in the wall and that's what holds it up. So if you go too fast, it's potential that you end up breaking the plastic. 
I'll show you one other thing here too. If your drill happens to have a light, you can sometimes look into that hole with the light and see where your insert is. So you can see in this hole that it's a little bit up and to the left. So we're gonna go ahead and just make sure everything looks good in each of these holes. Maybe a little difficult to see on camera, but it's definitely in there. And then we'll go ahead and screw them in, and that's how you hang one of these panels. So I need to turn that off. All right, lots of work left, but have the panel up, the TV on it, and uh, now we are ready to set up the bottom cabinets.